Ow. All right. So we've uh, talked about, you know, some skills. We've talked about some items. We've talked about the auction house. Let's talk about all the stuff that's going to kill you. So there's four difficulty levels in Diablo 3. Normal, Nightmare, Hell, and Inferno. You progress through those in a kind of linear order. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one of these. Well, more about Normal and then more about Inferno. So Normal. This is really the beginning of the game. It's um, Act 1 is kind of our tutorial. One of the things that at Blizzard is our general philosophies is we don't like kind of standalone tutorials very much. We, we don't like, you know, showing up and having like somebody show up and give you a wall of text that you have to read. We just want you to go kill stuff. We want you to learn how to play the game by playing it. Um, so as a result, kind of the early part of Act 1 is pretty easy. So monsters have really low awareness. You know, they're, they're not very aggressive. They won't really kind of attack you very, very kind of seriously. They don't attack very fast. They have a tendency to stand around. They're, they're a little ADD. Um, they um, have really, really limited abilities, especially in Act 1. Like, it's really uncommon to see even a ranged monster in the first act. So each act is really designed to layer on more challenges. And we, you know, we literally kind of bucketed all our monsters into different categories, like ranged and kind of proximity AOE and distance AOE and area denial and all these different abilities that they can do. And then we kind of gave them a rank score of what we thought was most difficult and kind of progressed those through all the difficulties. So in the later acts, you get into kind of more responsive monsters um, that are much more aggressive, much faster, and also have a whole bunch of new abilities that they come after you with. Oh. Who put that there? What does it mean? So, oh, uh, yes, what does it mean? It wasn't a double, though. It was just a single. It, it doesn't mean anything. Um, so um, this is the feedback we get. Normal's too easy. We get this um, from the beta feedback. We get this internally. Um, I have people come to me every day and say, yeah, we know. It's early in the game. It's supposed to be easy. But you don't understand, dude. It's way too easy. I remember Diablo 2, and Diablo 2 was not this easy. You're wrong. This is Diablo 2. Yeah. I think she's going to get hit in a second. Oh, oh, no, he missed. Oh, she got hit. Okay. Oh, she took some damage. I, I think she's going to be okay, though. So, you know, this is on purpose. Um, because early on, I know we're awesome. We're great at games. Um, but, and because of that, if you're hardcore like we are, this stuff's too easy for you. But it doesn't really matter because, you know, those of you who are in the beta, you're kind of trapped in the really low, kind of easy content. But you're going to blow past this so quick and get into the other difficulties. And, you know, we're going to talk about that a little today. Our challenge as game developers is to try and make the game approachable for casual players, but still interesting for serious gamers, um, and build a game that's got depth. There's a really important point here. Hardcore games for everyone is what Blizzard does. It's what we've always done. So one of the things that people say to us is the game feels really, really easy in the early game. Are you just making the game for casual players now? And we say, no, we're making the early game for casual players because we want to turn them into hardcore players. And because we do that is why we have so many wonderful people here today. So, and that's what we're going to keep doing. Thank you. That being said, I'm sure some of you are going, yeah, but come on, is it really hard? Like, how hard is it? It's not really hard, is it? You, you know, you got soft. It's not that hard. Well, you know, you're not going to believe anything I say. I'm going to be like, yeah, it's super hard, whatever. Um, so one of the things we asked uh, some of the guys on the team to do, we got a whole bunch of people on the team who are playing the harder difficulties now, and we're, we've asked them to, you know, do a little bit of a testimonial so you guys can see how hard the game really is. So you've got normal difficulty, you've got nightmare, hell, and inferno. Normal mode was pretty casual. It was very fun, you know, you're one clicking, you know, having laughs. Once you get into like nightmare mode, it starts kind of turning into all business. You're like, whoa, 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 like that thing just killed me. The game really starts, for me anyway, at nightmare. Once you go into hell difficulty, it starts getting really hard. And then you beat that, and you, you know, thought that was hard. And then you get to inferno, 
I just have a whole new set of challenges. That first rare monster pack is basically going to own you. You really have to watch your defensive stats. Uh, and at the same time, you're trying to build up your magic find. And it's hard because you have to. It's a fine balance. You're going to really need to use your gems and your enchants to really boost up your defense just to survive and not get one shotted. Sometimes just the AOE damage will almost kill you instantly. The whole thing is about surviving. You're not going to do any, any good to anybody dead. When you just rush into a boss in Nightmare and above, it's they will kill you so quick. Man, the biggest drop I want is gold. Um, <laughs> we spent so much money on repairs. A group of us probably spent a good hour wiping on a single boss. You really got to play as a team as in, in the later difficulties. The way the game's tuned right now, people have no idea what they're getting themselves into. People of the world, you've played this much of normal, which is this much of farming level. When you get to Nightmare and Hell and Inferno, you will get your asses kicked, we promise. I don't know what's doing that. I'm doing it somehow. Power of my mind, I guess. So, uh, higher difficulties, what are those all about? What are we going to do there? How are they going to be different than the normal difficulty? Um, and that's what I'm going to tell you. So Nightmare, Hell, Inferno, these are our higher difficulties. Um, a lot of the things we focus on in these higher difficulties is things that we can do to add depth to the game. So new item affixes. So one of the things that we found is that the Diablo Ida system is pretty dense. It's a pretty hardcore system. And so um, we've actually decided to go ahead and pull a lot of the item affixes that say don't matter that much in normal difficulty and just push them to the higher difficulties and not even bother in normal. I mean, a lot of you probably remember Diablo 2 and you'd get, you know, resistance items gear in normal difficulty and you didn't even care because resistance is in normal difficulty. It's, it's not that hard to stay alive in normal. So those are the kinds of affixes that we pushed up. And by pushing those kind of out of normal difficulty, what we do is we introduce new attributes in higher difficulties, which adds a lot of depth to how you build your character and really increases the item game. So one of the other things we do is focus a lot on rares and champions. Rares and champions are basically randomized monsters. We can take kind of any monster in the game and then we have a bunch of different powers that we give to them that get kind of randomly assigned. So, well, I think I went too fast. So uh, rares and champions early in the game, they've got um, kind of two powers in normal difficulty. In Nightmare, they can get up to three powers, and in um, Hell and Inferno, they can get up to four powers. And we also have a whole bunch of powers that don't even start showing up till you get past normal difficulty. And a lot of these powers really introduce new mechanics. So, um, and this is probably the best example when people ask us, how much have you really built the game for the higher difficulties? 70% of the items in the game don't even show up until past normal difficulty. So. These are some examples of just some of the high-end gear that you can get in some of the higher difficulties. So Inferno, this is our new difficulty that we announced um, a few months back. It's a, basically a maximum level difficulty. Um, once you reach maximum level, you can go to Inferno, and it's meant to be content that's always challenging, that you can never truly out-level. So we get this question all the time, can I solo Inferno? And the answer is yes you can solo Inferno, and the reason for that is that um, we've always viewed Diablo as a cooperative game for fun. Um, we don't require you to do cooperative play to get into the content, and I'll get into why in a little bit. We're also doing multiple tiers of items in Inferno, so tiers is really kind of a term that's not typically used with Diablo games, but it's, it's more of a WoW term, but it's kind of an easy kind of transfer of ideas. Essentially, there's, um, there's multiple tiers of items that appear in Inferno that are increasingly more rare. So the idea is once you get into Inferno, that first tier of new items, you'll, you'll start seeing more regularly, but that second and final tier are much, much harder to get. Um, and so it really increases the depth of the item game at that level. So, and rares and champions are really gonna be the best loot in the game. And one of the things that we're trying to um, avoid in Diablo 3 is, um, boss runs were fun in Diablo 2, but they got monotonous after a while. So we're really trying to find ways to get you to focus on randomized content um, as the way to get the best loot. And w this is going to be an ongoing problem, something we're going to continue to look at um, even after Diablo 3 ships, because we do think that there's going to be some optimal paths within the game, but those are things that we want to fix so that um, it's really fun to kind of go and do a broad array of content to get the best loot. So, and then your kind of excess loot and gold, it's all going to get funneled back into crafting and item enhancing, which we talked about earlier. So, and crazy builds. 
So this is one of the big things that you're, we want people to do, in, not just throughout the game, but definitely in Inferno. So I'm going to talk about that a little bit. What does crazy builds mean? Well, WoW really focuses on optimal builds, um, making the absolute best character that you can make. But Diablo has no guild to answer to, no raids, and no roles to perfect. And these are important facts to kind of realize about Diablo because it changes the nature of how you play the Diablo game. Um, for us, Diablo's cop is optional. It's something for fun. And our point here is that um, when people talk to us, they talk to us all the time and they'll say, I, you know, I did the math and it seems like if you take this ability with a two-hander, that's like a really, that's like the best combination. No one's, if you ever take that ability, you're always going to take a two-hander forever. And we say, well, yeah, probably, but if you take this other ability, you'll dual wield and that's okay. Both, both builds are viable. Um, and so a lot of the times people will talk to us about optimal builds and we'll turn around and say, yeah, there might be some optimal builds, but we're really interested in all the viable builds that are out there. So here's an example. People ask all the time, can you make a petless witch doctor? And absolutely you can make a petless witch doctor. Here's a petless witch doctor. I think this is hell difficulty, like late. Um, and um, the, um, essentially witch doctor uses a series of high defense attributes as well as grasp of the dead and spirit walk. These are really defensive abilities to be able to make a build that just doesn't need to use pets. Um, this is kind of an, you know, an unusual build for a witch doctor, but it's completely viable. So here's my favorite, um, Melee Wizard. Um, I, li I like to hit things. It's a personal flaw or strength, depending on your view on hitting things. Um, so um, this, the Wizard basically can do this by using a lot of kind of up-close AoE abilities, some really strong defensive abilities like Diamond Skin, to essentially make a character that can be up-close and personal. Um, and that's, again, not a common build for Wizard, but a viable one. So why? Why viable over optimal? Why are we even talking about this? So Diablo has tons and tons of customization. We did the math on the new skill systems with, with the combination of passives and runes, and we threw a crazy number out uh, a few years back of like 69 billion. We're really more in the area of 2.8 trillion. Trillion? Trillion. Yeah. Trillion builds. So that's a lot of builds. Um, and why? Why so many builds? Because customization is self-expression. And if you have to build a character to be perfectly optimized, that's not really going to allow you to customize that character. So our job is to make sure that, yeah, the, you know, while there might be some best builds, there's tons and tons of viable ones. It's totally okay for there to be best builds. It's totally okay for someone to go, you know what, I made this Barbarian and he's got like 0.5% more damage than any other build you can possibly make. And you know what, there's nothing wrong with that unless you can't, unless that number becomes oh, this, this Barbarian's like 50% more powerful. So if we can get enough builds into that range of these are all viable, they can play at the max level, it means you can play the character you want to play at max level and not be beholden to anyone. So what we say is go out, have fun, be free, and make the Diablo character you want to make.